Hi, everyone. My name is Stacy Wixall. I'm the director of Macedon Public Library. Welcome to Wood and Bead Christmas Trees. So the trees that um, you're going to learn how to make using a Glowforge are pretty easy to make. Um, if you have gotten your kit, and actually, I am missing one of my pieces. In your kit, you're going to have two pieces. They look like this, and the two pieces are slotted. Now, all you have to do is take the two pieces and put your slats together, and you have a three-dimensional Christmas tree. And you'll notice that your 3D Christmas tree has these little holes cut out. So the holes are where you put the Christmas tree decorations. And that's pretty easy to do. How you do that is you have been given these little jump rings. They look like this. You, some people got gold, some people got silver. Um, I, I ordered a whole bunch of them and they were in a variety of colors and I, I ran out of gold. So some of you might have silver and no matter what you got, they all look pretty. Um, so what you're gonna do, you don't even need pliers for the bigger ones. You can use the, plier, the pliers if you like, but probably you're gonna find out that if you push out with uh, thumb and finger on one side and pull towards yourself on the other. So it's like a saloon door opening. You can open that and then you can grab one of the little colorful beads that I gave you. And you're just going to take the little bead and simply thread it onto the ring. This one being a little stubborn, but there we go. So I threaded on a little bead onto that. It's still open. So I would not put these on till the end, but when it comes time to put them on, since I started with the beads, I'm gonna just show you. You just put it in the little hole like so, and then you have to, you're gonna feel like you're all fingers and you may want pliers for this part, but if you can, and I bet a lot of you will be able to, you can just kind of push the ring back close and there you go. You have a tree with a little decoration on it. But as I just said, I wouldn't do the ornament part first, I would paint first. But before I talk about painting it, I just want to let everybody know that some of you who picked up your trees right away may have gotten some really pretty glass red beads. Um, I bought those beads because I, I thought they would be beautiful and they would have been beautiful. I never would have suspected that those beads would not have been able to fit on the jump rings that I have. But when I got my tree home, that was just the case. So I apologize for not testing out the beads with the rings first. Um, it just never occurred to me that they'd be a problem, but they were a problem. So if you did not come back and um, let us know that the red beads were a problem, or if we weren't able to catch you and let you know, if you got a kit with, let me show you what I'm talking about. These really pretty red glass beads. You can keep the beads, they're really pretty, but they won't work for this project. I do have replacement beads. You just have to come in and let us know and we'd be happy to give you more beads that will work. So keep that in mind. So about the painting, what do I do? I like to use the sparkly nail polish. Um, but if you don't have nail polish, you don't wanna go to the dollar store and buy some nail polish, you could use acrylic paint works well, Sharpie markers work well. If you're doing this with children and you don't want a lot of mess and you don't want their hands to be 
um, dyed in different colors. You could, you could even color these with either crayon or colored pencil. That will work. Virtually anything you can think of, just about, will work on this wood and be pretty. So um, I, I just really, really like the way nail polish looks. So here's a little tree I have put together. It has, whoops, it has, um, I just used red seed beads on this one. Now all of you get, are, are gonna get multicolored beads. These are some little red beads I had at my house because um, the big red beads weren't gonna work. But, um, but it gives you a, the idea of what it will look like. Um, I used a gold nail polish on the star with a little bit of green sparkly nail polish over the top. And I went in with some white nail polish on the edge so it would have sort of an effect of um, being snowed on. So that's how I did my tree. For all of you who um, ordered a big tree and a little tree, I have to tell you that although they'll look really cute together, you know what looks even better? three trees because artistically to the eye three things always look better than one one or two things and if you have three things like three trees and they're all different heights it makes for a really pretty um almost like a pretty picture on your countertop so you're probably wondering, well, wait a minute, you only offered a mini tree and you only offered a big tree. What are you talking about? Well, if you wanna have a, me a medium sized tree, so you can make a nice little grouping of three trees that'll be very aesthetically pleasing, then hang on to your hat because I am going to share my screen and I'll show you how I made this cute little tree in Vectar. So let me share my screen. And so I just need to get to Vector. Okay, so I am in Vector. For anyone who doesn't know, Vector is one of the primary free sites that I use to create things for our Glowforge machine to print. Um, also for artwork, I like to use something called Procreate. It's available as an app for the iPad, but I'm not gonna get into that today. Right now, I'm just going to be in Vectar. I'm gonna go to my profile. Now, if you wanna do Vectar, you'll have to make an account. Once you've created an account, you'll have, you can click on my profile and you'll be able to create trees. So you can see I'm always busy creating stuff. You can see my, it saves everything. It's kind of like Google Drive, whatever you make, unless you delete it, it's automatically saved to your profile. So I'm gonna click right here on the blue, create file. And I will show you how I designed this little tree. So, all of the things, uh, well, not all of them. I don't use the pen tool. I don't use the pencil tool and I don't use text. I have other tools I like to use for those options. Um, like I use Procreate if I'm drawing. And for text, I tend to type what I want using either um, a Word document or a Google document and I I write what I want and I get it just how I want it to look in whatever font I like. And then I do like a little uh, screen snip and I can bring that over to anything I might wanna put text on. I find that works better. For today's project, there's no text, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, I primarily, when I'm using Vectar, it's for the shapes. So we have a rectangle shape, a rounded rectangle, an ellipse or circle, and you can upload your own images if you have any. Um, we won't be using that today. Or they have all these great shapes that are extra over here if you click on the three dots. 
So I'm just going to show you real quick. If I click a shape and I click on what I call this white space is my paper because it feels like a piece of paper to me. Um, I get a shape. I get all these little dots around the shape. Those I can pull to stretch and pull my shape to my satisfaction. So I can get it however I would like it to be. I can delete it if I don't like it. Um, and it's the same for every shape. You click it once there, you click on your paper, and then you make it how you want it. If you don't like it, you can delete. So if you're gonna make a Christmas tree, you have to think to yourself, what shapes is a Christmas tree made out of? Well, whoops, a Christmas tree, not let me grab the triangle, is made up of three triangles. So I've got one down. If I put a box around it and I say Command D, I can duplicate it and I can make three of them. Now you can make a tree pretty easily by just putting three triangles on top of each other and then grabbing a rectangle and maybe, you know, making it a little tree trunk for the tree. And that's cute. And maybe you like that. And if you do, wow, you're almost done. Um, I like my tree to have a small top, um, a bit of a bigger middle section, I'm kind of a traditionalist, I think. And see that blue line? That's just telling me that I have my triangles centered with the other triangle. Very handy that it does that for you. Um, it's good to have a good eye, but it's nice to have a helper tool also. So I'm just, there we go. I got the blue line. I know it's centered and I'm feeling like, and I'm feeling like I would like to put a trunk on it. So I got my square to make it a little bit bigger and there's my tree trunk and it's centered because the blue line came up. So once I get my tree, how I think it looks nice, I drag a box around it and this funky little menu up here comes up. The first thing unites stuff. The next thing subtracts things. This intersects, I never use intersect. It's for if you're doing really complicated things. And this excludes things. What I want to do is I want to unite everything. So my tree is one big piece because right now, if I were to export this into the Glowforge, it would cut each, rec each triangle separately plus a small rectangle. And what you'd have is a Christmas tree puzzle. I don't want a Christmas tree puzzle. I want a whole Christmas tree. So I am going to click on unite. And look at that, it's all one piece. I can tell because, <coughs> excuse me, because the little rectangle now has turned brown. It's all one piece. I can move it around. It's a Christmas tree, hooray. The next thing I wanna do to my tree, I wanna add a star to the top of it. So I'm gonna come to the extra shape section and pick a star and I'm gonna take it and I, I already like the size of it. So I didn't even, um, I didn't even mess around with stretching it or anything. It looked good just how it came. And I got it lined up because there's a nice blue line going down the center. And I'm gonna drop it there. But remember, if I bring it over to the Glowforge like this, it'll cut a star and part most of the tree which, which you'll have is a star with a little point cut out of it and you won't be happy. You gotta unite it, right? So I drag a box around the star in the tree and I'm gonna choose unite. And look at that. Now I have a tree with a star on top. What else does our tree need? Hmm, does anybody know? If you're thinking it needs some holes for ornaments, well, guess what? You're right. So I'm gonna make some small circles. 
like so. And then I'm gonna put a box around them and press Command D six times. Did I do six? One more. So I have six circles because I have six branches that will need an ornament. And I'm going to go ahead and place them so that they're near the edge, but not crazy close to the edge because we don't want the, the branch to be too fragile. If you go too close to the edge, the wood will be really fragile and, and you might break off your, your branch. So I want to be close, but not crazy close. And this is just a, an exercise in using your eyeball. I think that looks good. When you do the other side, that handy dandy tool with the line will come back into play and it will help you line things up. The first side is always the trickiest because you're kind of on your own with your own sense of space and eyeing it. So now on this side, See how these lines come up? And if you get three like that, it's line, it tells you you're completely lined up with the dot across from it, which is just what I want. And I can drop it and I know everything's lined up. So you just have to get the first side pretty good. And then the other side will be much easier and maybe even a snap. So there, I've got holes in my tree so that I have a place to put the little beads. But they're not holes. Right now, they're circles. They're not holes unless we subtract them from the tree. So watch this. I drag a box around the tree. And then I don't want to unite them because then the dots go away. And that would be handy if I didn't like where I put all those dots and I just wanted to get rid of them right away. I could use Unite and the tree fills right back up. I want to subtract them. Or I could go over here and say Exclude. Either one will work. I usually use Subtract. So I'm going to subtract all the little holes. So now when this tree goes to the Glowforge, it's going to cut, cut on the outside line and all the way around the tree. And it's gonna cut six little holes for our little jump rings to go through. Now, how many pieces does our tree need? It needs two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this tree. So I put a box around it and I hit Command D. And now I have two trees. But right now, if we were to print these, they'd be pretty. But you know what, we, we can't really fit them together because we need to make slots. How do you make a slot? What I do is I take a square, I push it relatively skinny. And then I, I pull it down. And then I line it up with the tree. We want our slot to be a little bit more than halfway up the tree. And I would say that's about right. It's about a little more than halfway up. Now you can't just make a slot and say, well, that looks good, that should work. Making the slot part is where you actually have to do a little bit of math. Don't worry, don't panic, it's not too terrible. Um, the first thing you're going to have to do is go over here to file settings and choose inches. And then you're going to have to get this rectangle to be the right size. So when you put the two pieces together, you don't want the slot so big that the tree's all wobbly, nimbly wimbly but you don't want the slot too small because then they won't fit together. So you have to know how thick your wood is. And I know that at the library, our wood is one eighth of an inch thick. 
which if you convert that into a de decimal would be 0.125. So that means I want my slot to be 0.13 inches wide. Now I know I said 125, but I just slightly bigger so that I won't have to force the, I want them to just slide nicely. So just making it 0.13 does the trick. So I'm gonna go here, see where I'm wiggling. And for width, I'm gonna tell it 0.13. Now, when I do that, one thing about Vectar, when you do the measurements here, it likes to make things proportionate, which can come in handy for certain projects. But for this, look what happened to my slot. It's, it's not really as, as long as I would like it. So I'm just gonna look at it. In fact, I can put it right on top of my tree and I would just like it a little bit longer because if it's too short, your trees won't work out so well. So I like it a little more than half and I think I just made it a little wider than I wanted it. I did, so I have to come back over here and tell it again, 0.13 and it's gonna fight with me. <laughs> But that's okay because I'm gonna fix it. I put it on my tree and I try again carefully to pull up to a height I like. I like it to be just just past the second set of holes from the, the middle holes is about right in my opinion. So I have a nice slot, but I need two. So I'm gonna put a box around my slot and I'm gonna make a duplicate and I have two of them. So one of them is gonna line up. I'm just gonna work through the lines. I've got my blue lines telling me I'm centered. And then I'm gonna put the other one up here, lined up with the point of my star. There we go. And I got my blue line telling me it's centered. So I'm gonna drop it there. And there we've got slots, or do we? Not yet. We have to drag a box around the tree and we have to tell it to subtract on both of them. Box around it and subtract. And there you have it. You ha we have a tree that can be part of the little grouping. But wait a minute, how tall are these pieces anyway? Well, it just so happens they are 3.53 inches. So if you think back, the little, if you already have a mini tree, I made those three and a half inches. So this is just a skosh, probably barely even visible to your eye, um, bigger. So what can I do? This is where the proportionality part comes in nicely. If I know that I want my middle tree to be, let's say five inches, that's kind of in the middle of three and a half and six and a half. So I'm gonna type in five here and look it. It sized the trees for me. I didn't even have to worry about it. So now I have a middle sized tree that is ready for the Glowforge. So if you were to do this at home and you wanted to print yourself a middle-sized tree, you're probably thinking it's impossible because we're now on the grab and go service model plan. It's not impossible. Let me show you another step. If you wanted to print these, you would just have to go here. This little box that has an arrow pointing up is how you download your design. So you're gonna click it it should say um, SVG right here. And you're going to say download. It's going to download to your computer. If you email Macedon Library Director at owl.org and attach your SVG file to the email, then I will be happy to take your file 
and load it into the Glowforge and make your print. And I'm really hoping some of you will be brave and try to make your own mid middle sized Christmas tree. And you know what else? If you make this little tree and you are successful, there's a pretty good chance that you won't be able to stop. <laughs> Once you get a taste for how this works, I think a lot of you are probably going to want to make other things. And it is a lot of fun. And again, I'm happy to print out your creations, how it would work. You'd email me, I'd get the file. I would print it out. I'd give you a call. Um, so make sure I have a phone number you can be reached at. I'd give you a call and I'd say, guess what? Your Christmas tree is all printed. When would you like to come in to pick it up? You'd tell, tell us a time. And then when you come, um, we would just go out to your car. We'd give you the tree, um, a tree this size, I would probably charge a dollar for. So you'd give us a dollar, we'd give you the tree and that's all there is to it. Pretty, pretty easy. So I really hope some of you will give it a shot. And I just want to point out, I don't know if it's because I'm uh, videoing and trying to do this um, remotely like this, but I would not want to print this because if you look, I didn't get my slot quite far enough. You want it to be completely open. If I brought this to the Glowforge, I'd have this little piece of wood right here that would still be intact. <laughs> but it's fixable. Since I see it, I'm just gonna show you how I'd fix it. I would grab a rectangle. I would come over. I'm just showing you because um, I think it's important to know that anything you can do, anything that happens, you can usually figure out a way to fix it. It's not the end of the world. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here like this. We're going to subtract that rectangle from this tree. So I drag a box around it and I say subtract. Now look at that. It's clearly cut out. So I hope that you were able to learn something from all my ramblings on how to make a Christmas tree that will be 3D. I hope you're brave and you try it out and I get some um, SVG files to print. And I wish all of you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.